Welcome back to the Deep Six Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Pat, and we are here today on Saturday, September the 3rd, to talk about AEW All Out 2022, which is tomorrow on Sunday, September the 4th. Then we got Labor Day on Monday. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the pay-per-view. We are here. It's just me today, uh, so this should go by fairly quickly. I wish I could have gotten somebody else to join me just to have somebody to bounce off and talk about the show with, but alas, it's just me here today to talk about All Out, and um, yeah, and then Clash at the Castle starts in a couple hours. I woke up early so I could do this, so I could catch that show, just because I am, I am pretty curious um, to, to check that out. It's a short uh, card, too, especially compared to this, but... Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, Clash of the Castles later, I don't know if we're gonna have a review out for it, maybe Rob will record one later, I know he is very busy today, the man is working a 16 hour shift, he's working just non-stop, um, but he will be watching, uh, so, but if he, uh, if he's free later tonight, maybe he'll do it, if not, I won't make him, obviously, because, uh, uh, you know, again, he's working a long shift, so I, 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 if I was him, I wouldn't want to. But uh, All Out is tomorrow, and that means Monday morning, just because I think we all know this show is going to be long. Monday morning, we will have our review out for All Out. And then this coming week, I have no idea what podcasts are going to be coming out. You will have absolutely nothing from me. I am going to be on vacation Um, so I'll be back the following week, which is a shame that I'm going to be missing the Fallout shows to All Out, as I assume there's probably going to be some pretty big stuff going on. Um, I don't think there's going to be Impact Power Hour from Ryan and Angelo this week, um, and maybe Rob's Smackdown review will carry us through the week, but we'll, uh, we'll see. So, uh, kicking off the week, this holiday week, I guess, uh, you're going to have our, uh, All Out review, and then maybe to close out the week, you'll have a SmackDown review. We'll see what happens. But um, if you're new here, consider subscribing to the podcast. We're on YouTube. We're on all streaming services where you can find podcasts at. Um, you can follow us over on Twitter at Deep Six Wrestling. If you want to like really help us out, again, go to our YouTube channel. Help us get to 250 subscribers, and uh, you know, then you can listen to the podcast on YouTube if you want. And, yeah, I think that's about it. So we're going to dive into All Out. It's a very long show. Um, But remember, (laughs) AEW does four or five pay-per-views a year, and this is, like, the equivalent of WrestleMania for them. So, uh, sure. Um, Okay, so our pre-show has four matches. It's now called the Zero Hour. So we have the AAA Mixed Tag Team Titles with Ty Mello and Sammy Guevara defending against Ruby Soho and Ortiz. Hook defending the FTW Championship against Cool Hand, Ange, Angelo Parker. Pack defending uh, the All-Atlantic Championship for the first time live in AEW against the returning Kip Sabian. And Eddie Kingston versus Tomohiro Ishii 2. Uh, that's very exciting. And then on the main show, we have Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho. Uh, the House of Black versus Miro Sting and Darby Allen. Wardlow and FTR versus Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. That should be fun. Uh, Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Christian Cage versus Jungle Boy. A casino ladder match featuring Claudio Castagnoli, Wheeler Yuta, Penta, Phoenix, Roosh, uh, Andrade El Idolo, Dante Martin, and a Joker. Um, the winner gets a shot at the AEW World Championship. Jade Cargill defends the TBS Championship against Athena. Uh, We have the AEW World Trios Championship uh, Tournament Finals, where our first set of champions will be crowned. It is the Elite, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega versus the Dark Orders, John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Hangman Page. 
The AEW World Tag Team Championship is on the line with Swerve and Our Glory defending against the Acclaimed. The interim AEW Women's Championship match with Tony Storm versus Jamie Hayter versus Hikaru Shida versus Britt Baker and CM Punk versus John Moxley in the main event for the AEW World Championship, a rematch from two weeks ago on Dynamite where CM Punk was squashed. But now it's his home turf in Chicago, and he has been fired up by his best, or one of his best friends and long-term uh, partners, Ace Steel, the man who trained him. So we're going to work our way from the pre-show to the main event, going through the predictions and uh, just talking about these matches. So first up, we have our AAA Mixed Tag Team Championship match, Ty Mello and Sammy Guevara. Uh, this is the last match added to the pay-per-view, uh, coming off of Rampage, where Ruby Soho and Ortiz would defeat uh, Ty and Sammy, with Ruby scoring a, uh, a roll-up on Ty. The titles are on the line here. This feels like the title on the pre-show that could change hands. Uh, it's the AAA belts, so it's not like they mean too much, I'm going to be honest. Um, and it's Chicago, so Ruby's going to be pretty popular, um, as was seen on Rampage. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Ruby and Ortiz steal the win here. Um, and I don't want to say steal like heels, but like, you know, come away with like uh, a surprising victory, especially again, because it's the, the zero hour. So, um, I, I did go for Ty and Zami retaining. It's tied up 1-1. I don't know if I see Ruby and Ortiz as... The champs, but again, I feel like these titles are defended or like used more in AEW than they are necessarily in AAA. So, uh, yeah. Um, so I've gone for Ty and Sammy, as has Joey, Sam, Angelo, and Ryan. Jake and Rob have Ruby Soho and Ortiz walking away with the championships. So, um, yeah, and that sends us into Hook defending the FTW championship against Angelo Parker. I think everybody assumes that Hook is going to retain here but this is his biggest match yet um as champion it's his uh you know he's not defending against zach clayton from aw dark um i don't know what to expect from this one i don't expect a long match by any means probably like five minutes um i don't know if angela parker's gonna get much offense in but we'll see i will say their uh the segment they did on rampage was pretty great with uh, with them confronting Hook, Hook taking off his shirt and them backing down, and uh, Matt Menard screaming that they're going to have the taste of the title. Uh, I love 2.0. I'm very happy they signed contract extensions. Pack versus Kip Sabian for the All Atlantic Championship. This one is the one I think I'm probably the most curious about on the uh, the, zero, the zero hour, as I kind of assumed they were going to hold off on this and do it on TV just because. Kip returned in the Trios tournament to take out Pac and basically cost his team against the United Empire. Uh, after, you know, appearing in the UK at Pac's uh, other Atlantic Championship defenses. This is Kip's first match back. He didn't get to wrestle on Dark or anything, no tune-up matches. So this is his first match back and it's on the pay-per-view. Um... So, like, and he's debuting a brand new gimmick, so you would assume that there's some merit to, to Kip winning this, uh, to really, like, establish this new character, this new gimmick, and to, you know, solidify him. And it's not like Pac hasn't had defenses of this title. Like, he's defended it, like, three or, like, between three and five times already, I think. Um, I don't think it would be seen as necessarily a satisfying title run, but this is also the first time we're seeing the title back in AEW, and I feel like people need to remember that this is going to most likely be more of a touring title than it is going to be one that's actively on television. At least that's the way it's appeared to be. Um, that could also just be because Pac lives in the UK, um, and you know, should somebody from New Japan win this, it'll probably be featured more in New Japan than it is AEW. So, I don't know. Again, I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Kip wins this, but I just feel like Pac should have a longer run. Um, so that's why I went for Pac, as did Rob, Angelo, uh, Sam and Joey. Ryan and Jake have gone for Kip Sabian winning the title, and again, I don't think it's necessarily out of the realm of possibility. And our final zero-hour match is Eddie Kingston versus Tomohiro Ishii 2. These two met earlier in the year in New Japan, where Ishii would pick up the victory. And for that reason, I have gone for Eddie Kingston. 
as has Joey, uh, Ryan, and Rob. Jake, Angelo, and Sam have gone for New Japan's Tomohiro Ishii. Um, Eddie's coming off of a suspension. Ishii is... There's there's no real build to this besides, you know, them saying it's the second match between these two and Eddie cutting a promo about how last time he lost to Tomohiro Ishii, but he's stronger now and he'll beat him. I just feel like Eddie kind of can get this win. It's not like Ishii's a super protected guy, especially in New Japan. Like, he can take losses. Um... So, uh, yeah, I'm going with Eddie to win this. And you can do a third match down the line if you want. Maybe it, um, if Eddie's free for it, if there's nothing going on, maybe it, like, Royal Quest, um, for, for New Japan. Um, yeah. So that's the Zero Hour, and we're gonna move on into the main show next, which, uh, we have our first match listed here. Again, this isn't the actual match order, we don't know what that is, but, uh, first up we have Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho, and this is a clean sweep for everybody. Everybody chose Brian Danielson to win this one. Uh, this is his first pay-per-view match, well, yeah, his first pay-per-view match since Double or Nothing, where he got injured and then was forced to miss Forbidden Door, and his match with Zack Sabre Jr. was called off. Um, he's off TV for a bit. And then he came back for the Garcia match, and then the Garcia match again, and now we're following up with Chris Jericho. So, um, yeah, I feel like this is Danielson's match to win. Uh, he hasn't won on pay-per-view yet, has he? No, he did. He he won the he won at Full Gear, and he lost at Revolution, uh, and he lost at Double or Nothing. So. Yeah, this is 100% his match to win, I think. And most likely storyline stuff with Daniel Garcia will play into this. Um, but I'm excited for this. This is one of the matches that I think could potentially steal a show. I also think this could very well be the opening match. It'll probably be the latter match, but you could open the show with this. Um, similar to what they did for Revolution, where they opened with Jericho versus Eddie Kingston, and that was a very strong, memorable match. Um... I still choose to believe that is the only Eddie Kingston Chris Jericho match. I will ignore the Shark Cage match. Um, or the Barbed Wire Everywhere match is what it was called with uh, JAS in a Shark Cage. All right, House of Black versus Miro, Sting, and Darby Allen. This feels like the House of Black need this win. Um, Sting is yet to lose in AEW. I think I'm pretty sure he's still undefeated. Um, obviously only has done tag matches. The implications through the build-up through this have been that, like, I, anybody watching this would, would assume that you're going to get Sting versus Malachi Black in a singles match at some point. You'd also assume Miro versus Malachi or Miro versus Brody at some point. Um, obviously the news regarding Malachi Black is kind of up in the air with, with reports of him asking for his release, then other reports saying that uh, things have been smoothed over with him and everything's okay now. So, we really don't know. Um, but regardless, I think the House of Black should win here. Um, if they don't, I think it's telling that, yeah, Malachi is probably on his way out. Um, or at least is taking, like, a leave of absence to, to deal with his issues. Um, but regardless, I would s assume the House of Black wins this. I feel like... The trio's titles are just debuting now. These this this trio is they're like one of the coolest groups in AEW. And talent wise, Brody King has ascended the roster this year. Um, with Malachi going down with injury and with Buddy Matthews going to Australia for a bit, Brody King made the best of that situation and was elevated to an extreme degree. Um, that man feels like a star. I think that you could make the case that these guys should be the, the next trio's champions. I don't necessarily think the trio's titles need to be, like, our first champions, whether it's Dark Order or whether it's the Elite. I don't think they need to be champions long. I think you can do a shock title change and have House of Black defeat them um, fairly early on in their reign, uh, personally. I think that would be very good for the House of Black. And we've seen that they can do trio's match as well. Go back to Double or Nothing and watch their match with Death Triangle. That was bonkers. Um, so yeah, I am assuming this is probably going to be one of the, the most fun matches on the card just because it's a House of Black Trios match and it's Sting on pay-per-view. And you're also getting Miro and Darby Allen. So I'm assuming this should be a ton of fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. 
Uh, but as for the predictions, everybody but Angelo chose the House of Black. Angelo has gone for Miro, Sting, and Darby Allen. And that sends us into another trios match with Wardlow and FTR versus Jay Lethal and Impact Wrestling's Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, Ryan is the only person who chose Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. I will say I did contemplate it at one point just because... We established that Jay Lethal wants another shot at the TNT Championship. FTR have been very outspoken about wanting to face Motor City Machine Guns. So, Lethal and the Machine Guns winning this match would set up title matches for that, where Lethal would get to face Wardlow, and the Motor City Machine Guns would get to challenge FTR for the IWGP or the ROH uh, Tag Team Championships. That being said, I went with the safe pick, and I did Wardlow and FTR... I, again, I don't think it's nearly as cut and dry. I am a little surprised that he's the only person who chose Jay Lethal and Motor City Machine Guns, but I guess I'm a little more glad that it's not, like, super split. Um, so, if, if if they win, only Ryan's getting a point. Um, but yeah, so... I'm excited for this. I'm, I'm very happy that we're going to get to see Motor City Machine Guns wrestling in AEW. And, you know, it's really just continuing to build up this trios division, as you now have Wardlow and FTR... Who could theoretically be a team? Um, obviously, I think a lot of people would want FTR and CM Punk, but if Punk goes heel, I don't think FTR is going heel again, at least for the current time. So we'll see, but um, but yeah, I'm excited for this one, and it should be pretty good. And if it leads to Motor City Machine Guns versus FTR two on two, I think that's a win. I think that's a win for everybody, if I'm being honest. Next up, we have Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Definitely one of the um, bigger singles matches on the show, um, especially in terms of story. Um, this is one that I think a lot of people are looking forward to. Uh, so, obviously the story of a former tag team uh, that started to, you know, dominate the tag team division, and they, they looked like they were going to win the championships. Everybody was calling that Hobbs and Stark's time was coming, and then they went with Swerve in Our Glory, the team that they were actually teasing a breakup for, and they swerved us. Uh, as Powerhouse Hobbs would turn his back on Ricky Starks and would obliterate him, saying that Starks was never his friend, and he's just a loser, and he let them lose the titles, or lose the their shot at the titles twice. And now here we are. Uh, we're getting the singles match with Hobbs versus Starks. Whew. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is one where it's... I'd say it's kind of hard to call just because... You know, it's the first time they're doing a singles match. I want to say this is both guys' first pay-per-view singles match. I could be wrong, but I feel like it is. Um, not counting, like, ladder matches, because I think they both have been in, in ladder matches. But in terms of just, like, a strictly singles one-on-one -on -one match, I think this is their first one. I think Hobbs wins this. I think Hobbs winning elevates him immediately. Starks is your big underdog babyface right now. I don't necessarily think he needs to win. And this is where it's going to get kind of tough. Because similarly, we have Christian Cage versus Jungle Boy on this card. And I chose the heel to win in both of those matches. Um, I have Christian and Hobbs winning. And I don't necessarily think both are winning. I think an argument can be made that if Hobbs wins, Jungle Boy wins. If Cage wins, Starks wins. I don't necessarily think you're going to get Hobbs and Cage both winning, but at the same time, I think there are a lot of babyface wins on the rest of the card that, you know, you can offset this if you, uh, you know, pace the show well. Um, but I'm looking forward to both these singles matches, but if we're still on Hobbs and Starks, I think this could be a really good match. These guys know each other. I, it appears that they're actually friends in real life. I would assume they're going to go out there and try and kill it. But I think Hobbs winning can elevate him without really hurting Ricky. Uh, you can easily rehab Ricky and continue this down the line, but you're really trying to build Hobbs as this, like, powerhouse, pun intended, uh, heel right now, I feel like Hobbs should win this, and I feel like Hobbs should probably be the one to eventually dethrone Wardlow, and then Starks can dethrone Hobbs, um, I feel like that should be your TNT title lineage, I feel like that makes a lot of sense, and it will build that title back up, um... So I'm going with Powerhouse Hobbs here, uh, and the only two people who chose Ricky Starks are Rob and Ryan. They both went with Ricky Starks to picking up the dub here. Uh, so everybody else, meaning Sam, Jake, Joey, uh, Angelo, and myself, have gone for Hobbs. 
And that sends us into Jungle Boy versus Christian Cage. Another big singles match here. And, uh, yeah, so I said I already... I, I spoiled it that I chose Christian Cage. I think this continues, and I think Cage, you know, does some nefarious shit to win. Uh, I am joined by Rob and Ryan, both choosing Christian Cage. Jake, Angelo, Joey, and Sam have gone for Jungle Boy. And I don't think this is as cut and dry. Like, I think this is pretty up in the air. This all depends on this is, like, if this is the only singles match they're doing between these two, then yeah, Jungle Boy should win. If they're continuing this for, like, a long-term story, then Cage 100% should win this. Um, solidify Cage as one of your top heels in the company and have him beat Jungle Boy. Makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but yeah, both of those are two that I'm looking forward to quite a bit. I think that they have potential to be great matches, and two very different matches, probably, um, as well. The Casino Ladder Match... Claudio, Wheeler, Penta, Phoenix, Roosh, Andrade, and Dante Martin, as well as a Joker. Only two people <laughs> chose actual non-Joker people, and those are Angelo and me. Uh, Angelo has gone for Penta, L0M. I have gone for Andrade, El Idolo. Again, a lot of this depends on who walks out of this pay-per-view as, as world champion. Um... If it's Moxley, I feel like my chances go up strongly with Andrade. If it's Punk... If it's Punk, it can really be anybody, um, because I don't think he's fa he's faced Penta, and he has said that he wanted a rematch with him, So, but I feel like it can be anybody. I, again, I don't think it's going to be Wheeler or Claudio. Um, they're already strapped up with titles, uh, although I, I do assume Yuta's losing his pure title on Wednesday. Um, but I, I don't think they're going to have Claudio going for another world title at the moment. I don't know. Um... Speculation on the Joker this time is, is casting a very wide net, as we will get to when we get to our bonus picks, but there's a lot of names being tossed out there as potential Joker with MJF, Adam Cole, Lance Archer, uh, Samoa Joe, uh, Kota Ibushi, technically, has been putting out tweets that have indicated he's coming to America. Um, I, I, there's just, like, there's a lot of people that it could be. Um, so the Joker's really up in the air, but... Uh, Sam, Joey, Angelo, or sorry, Sam, Joey, Ryan, Jake, and Rob have all gone for the Joker winning, so, uh, pretty clear Joker, uh, is, is who most people are guessing. Uh, and that's us into the TBS Championship match, which is Jade Cargill defending both the title and her undefeated streak against Athena. Oh, man, um, I don't know. You know, a couple weeks ago, I would have said Athena's guaranteed to win this. But, like, as we've gotten closer to this show, I'm just like... Does she? I've still chosen Athena. Um, myself, Ryan, Jake, and Rob have chosen Athena. Angelo, Joey, and Sam have gone for Jade retaining. I was very close to choosing Jade to retain, but I just feel like... Uh, Tony Khan has said that he views this pay-per-view as a, a, a reset, a, a change for the women's division. I feel like that, you know, that would indicate that you're changing, you know, your, your women's titles. Uh, Athena getting this title and being able to wrestle more often than Jade does definitely would, would probably help. Um, it would also elevate her immediately to be the one to end Jade's undefeated streak. Everybody, like, we all know this was supposed to be Statlander. But she's out for another, I think it's like six to nine months. I don't think, I, I love Jade. I don't want another six to nine months of the undefeated streak. Um, especially at the rate we're going. This 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 feud with her and Athena was drawn out so, so long. Um, and I, it hurt both, both women's momentum. Um, they did have a really, really good segment on Rampage. So I'll give them to that. Um, and it, it did build my hype up a bit more for this. I think Athena cut, like, the promo of her career. But I'm just, like, I, I'll be glad that this is over when it's over. Um, and I hope they have a good match. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with my Athena pick, but I don't necessarily think it's, like, guaranteed that she's winning this. I think there's a, a strong chance Jade wins. And maybe she drops it at Grand Slam, but I don't know who to who. Um, so we'll see, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's us into the AEW Trios Championship, uh, finals here, and it looks like, 
Uh, who is... I think this is Angelo? Yes, this is Angelo. Angelo is on an island here. Is he has chosen... No, he's not. It's Ryan who's chosen this. Uh, Ryan is on an island once again as he has chosen the good, the bad, and the hungry. Dark Order and Hangman Page 2 win the Trios tournament and become the first champions. Again, this is another one that I think is a fair one to pick. I think there is a strong chance that Adam Cole gets involved in this match to some degree and possibly costs the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Um... And, yeah, I, again, this is... I don't necessarily think you need it. Um, but, like... Regardless, this is going to be... A, I, I expect this to be one of the show-stealing matches, just based off the quality that this trios tournament has provided, and the story here with the uh, with the Elite and Hangman, uh, obviously with the Young Bucks trying to get Hangman to be their partner before they went to Omega, uh, this being the first time Omega and Hangman have been in the ring since Full Gear last year, when, when Hangman beat him... Uh, the fact that the Young Bucks could have prevented Hangman's victory over Kenny, but they, they didn't, and they let Hangman beat Omega last year. There's a lot going on. Um, so I'm excited for this one. I think this could be one of the best matches on the show. Um, that being said, these titles do feel like they were crafted for the Bucks and um, the, the, the Bucks and Kenny. Though, with me saying that, you know, the House of Black should win these titles... Dark Order already beat House of Black once. They could come back th for their revenge since, you know, they got distracted uh, by, by Miro and them. So, yeah, I, I don't know. You could make the argument Dark Order wins and then House of Black comes back and cuts off their momentum, like, instantly. Um, and then takes the titles. We'll see. But um, I chose the Elite. Um, again, I think this is up in the air. I can see either guy, either either team winning, to be honest. Um, but Ryan's on the island with the good, the bad, and the hungry, and that sends us into our AEW World Tag Team Championship match, which is Swerve in Our Glory versus The Acclaimed, and we have a clean sweep here for Swerve in Our Glory. Uh, I just don't think it's their time to lose the titles. I won't be mad if The Acclaimed win by any means. I love both teams. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. This should be a fun pay-per-view match. But in terms of, like, do I see the titles changing hands? No, no, not really. I think Swerve in Our Glory deserve... A good pay-per-view defense here. And then you could have them lose the titles at full gear if you want in November. Which, spoiler alert, it sounds like uh, our group is going to be attending because rumors are abound that full gear is taking place from Newark, New Jersey. Which means we will be able to go to our first AEW pay-per-view event, which is very exciting. Um, but I feel like Swerve and Our Glory deserve to hold the titles till like at least then. Um, so, I, again, them defeating the Acclaim makes sense to me. And, uh, yeah. Final two matches here. The interim a or the AW interim World women's world champion will be crowned in a fatal four way with Tony Storm versus Jamie Hader versus Britt Baker versus Sakara Shida. We have another clean sweep here with Tony Storm. This is one where I think it's it's probably between two people. I think it's Britt and it's Tony, um, with maybe an outside shot of Jamie Hader stealing the win. I don't think Sheeta's winning this, unfortunately. Um, but I am very happy for Tony Storm. I think she's been one of the best women's wrestlers this year. I've loved like everything she's done since coming to AEW. Um, and yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. So I've gone for Tony Storm along with everybody else in our group. And I just feel like it makes sense, you know. Um, it put the title on Tony. When Rosa comes back, they face off. Tony beats her. Rosa goes heel. Feels pretty pretty standard to me. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to this four way a lot though. I think this has potential to be one of the better women's matches for AEW. So uh, hopefully this is a sign to come that moving forward we get some more exciting women stuff. Uh, some of the tag matches they've had on TV have been really good. Uh, Thunderstorm versus Jamie and Britt, and then Sheeta Storm versus uh, Jamie and Britt were both really really good stuff. And finally, our 15th match on, sh on the show, the AEW World Championship is on the line as Jon Moxley defends against CM Punk in Chicago, and we have one person who's chosen Jon Moxley, and it's Angelo. Angelo is on an island here with his pick for Jon Moxley to retain. Everybody else has gone for CM Punk. This is so fucking hard to predict. <laughs> People can, can complain about them doing the match on TV and doing the squash match, but 
literally, I don't think anybody knows how this match is going to go, which is exciting. Um, the fact that, like, anything can happen at this point, I think it really makes it, like, a lot more exciting um, than had we just done the unification match at the pay-per-view. So... I'm excited for this. I think Punk wins. I don't know how. I don't know if he turns heel in... I don't know how you turn him heel in Chicago. Um, so I'm assuming he wins and then turns heel later as champion. Um, maybe even as soon as the Fallout show in New York. Um, maybe he cheats to win in Chicago, but Chicago still cheers him because they're lunatics and it's Chicago. Um, and then he gets the, the, the villain's welcome in New York. I really... I don't know. Um, so we'll see, but it's, it's definitely interesting. And I, I do like the story that they've laid out with, you know, it should have been the next summer of punk, but he went down with injury. Moxley stepped up and it became the summer of Moxley. Uh, and then Moxley squashed him and he took the title and cemented the summer as his, um, he, he prevented the comeback for punk and now punk has to, you know, try again. I think it's a fairly straightforward story. I don't think it's nearly as complicated or convoluted as people have made it out to be. Questioning why Punk got another title shot when Moxley clearly... Op like, they laid this out like as, as clearly as you could with Moxley being like, open challenge, anybody can take it. Ace Steel takes the, the contract, gives it to Punk. Punk gets the title shot. Straightforward. I'm excited for this. I think these two could have a, a fantastic match. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping they deliver... Um, but we'll see. Uh, as for our tiebreaker, uh, I've asked everybody how long they think the CM Punk John Moxley match is going to go, and uh, compared to the I think three minute match they had where Moxley squashed him, we have gone much higher. As we have uh, Joey with twenty minutes and one second, Sam with twenty one minutes and one second, uh, myself Pat with seventeen minutes and thirteen seconds. Um, Angelo with 19 minutes and 45 seconds, Ryan with 22 seconds, or sorry, 22 minutes and 22 seconds, Jesus Christ, 22 minutes and 22 seconds, uh, Jake with 18 minutes and 34 seconds, and Rob with 21 minutes and 7 seconds. So, to clarify some of these, uh, Joey has 20 minutes and 1 second, and then that follows up with, <laughs> with Sam at 2101, which follows up with Rob at 2107, which then Ryan comes in at 2222. So all of them are on top of each other with their with their picks. So that's fun. At least Jake, Angel, and me have like minute like a minute in between each of our picks. Um, and then we have our six bonus questions. So these are just bonus points for the show. So th this is going to be a lot of points on the show, just based off of this. Plus we also have our lottery, which I'll go over at the end. Um, so who will be the Joker in the casino ladder match? Our picks vary. Joey has gone for Kota Ibushi, uh, Sam has gone for Samoa Joe, and then wrote in, if not him, then Hangman. That's not how it works, he can't choose two people, so Samoa Joe is his pick. Uh, I've gone for Lance Archer, Angelo's gone for Brian Cage, Ryan has gone for Lance Archer, and Jake and Rob have gone for MJF. Will, uh, bonus number two, will MJF return on the pay-per-view? Uh, the only person who said no is Angelo. This is one that's very interesting because he could be the Joker or he's showing up in or after the main event. But then the question is, does he come back as a babyface? The last time we saw him, he was getting ridiculously cheered, but he's showing up in Chicago against Punk, so he's going to get booed. But it's a return, so like there's still a strong chance he gets cheered. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they handle the MJF return um, or if they save it for New York. Um, or does he not come back? But most people are under the assumption he's coming back, so... Uh, number three, uh, I believe this is, will there be any debuts on the pay-per-view? Um, me and, or, yeah, me and Ryan are the only two people who said no, so every, uh, everybody else said yes. Rob, Jake, uh, Angelo, Joey and Sam all said yes. Ryan and me both said no debuts. I just can't think of anybody that would debut. Um, and, like, based off of our picks for the, the ladder match, the only person who put in an actual debut is Joey, so, like... I'm going off that right now that I don't see anybody debuting, so we'll see. Um, number four, will Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and or Kyle O'Reilly appear during the pay-per-view uh, in the arena? Uh, I have once again gone for no, as has Rob. Uh, Jake, Ryan, Angelo, Joey, and Sam have gone for yes. 
Uh, number five, will Daniel Garcia turn on Chris Jericho uh, or Chris Jericho turn on Daniel Garcia? Basically, will, will these two split up? Um, and somewhat split here. Joey has said yes, they will split up. Sam has gone with no, they will stay together. I have gone for yes, they will split up. Angelo has said no, they will stay together. Ryan has gone for yes, they will split up. Jake has gone for no, they won't. And Rob has gone for yes. And finally, will CM Punk turn heel? Sam and me said no, everybody else said yes. I just don't know how they do it. Um, and it's so interesting because, like, I think some people are going to see this is like, if Punk cheats to win. Like, it, like there's there's levels to this. If Punk, like, puts his foot on the ropes to for, like, leverage, I don't know if I'd qualify that as turning heel. If he openly, like, low blows John Moxley, yeah, I'll count that as him going heel. That's a heel move. Using your ropes for leverage is kind of pushing it, especially when you're against Moxley, who's already toeing the line. Um... Like, I, it needs to be clear cut that this man is is going heel, and that it's not just like, oh, you know what? No, I guess it's, thinking on this, if he uses the the ropes for leverage, even that's that's still cheating to win. I just like I can't see. I I physically cannot picture the Chicago crowd booing him unless he does the most ridiculously like evil pro wrestling shit. And even then, it's going to be pushing it. You need a lot of stuff to happen in this match. You need him to cheat like crazy against Moxley. You need maybe Moxley to win and Punk to just brutalize him after the main event. You need MJF showing up and coming in as, like, the hero and saying Punk is, like, the snake I, I told you he was. But that feels like something to do on TV. Um... So, again, I feel like that's why, like, Punk needs to win here, I guess, by cheating. To, to establish Punk as a heel, Punk would need to cheat here by winning very clearly. MJF would need to show up and position himself, I guess, in a babyface capacity, which, again, just... This is fantasy booking out the ass, because there's a strong chance Punk doesn't go heel, MJF comes back, and MJF's the heel. Um, but I feel like the compelling story is that, you know, MJF comes back, and he's, like... He's shown that he was correct, that Punk is a snake, that he is, <clears throat> Punk is what he claims to not be. And, you know, it goes off on this this whole ex, or anti-ex-WWE crusade. Um, but we'll see. Like, I, I really don't know how they're going to play this out. Uh, when, if MJF shows up, I, I don't know if he's positioned as a face or a heel. The last time we saw him, he got a very strong babyface reaction from the crowd. Um... And, you know, the fact that there, like, was a lot of speculation that we wouldn't see him again, and now we know that we probably are going to see him again, I feel like that's going to make a lot of people happy. So I feel like, to some extent, he is going to get cheers when he comes back. And he's MJF. If if they want him to play a heel, he'll get the people to boo him. Um, but, like, again, they have two weeks in New York, so it just feels like if he's back, like, for these New York shows... He's going to get the babyface reaction, regardless of who he's up against right now. Um, so we'll see. But that's all out for you. Um, so that's our predictions for the show. I'm looking forward to it quite a bit. I think it is a very loaded lineup. The build to it has been messy, but the last couple weeks have been pretty good. Um, look at Forbidden Door. They, they kind of dropped the ball with the build to that and delivered one of the best pay-per-views of the year. Uh, still currently my favorite pay-per-view of the year. So we'll see. Um, again, you can look at this for a bunch of different companies. You can look at it for WWE, who has often had terrible builds to pay-per-views and has then knocked it out of the park. Um, and you've had AEW, who's, you know, told great stories on TV and then, like, under-delivered its pay-per-view. So, um... We'll see, but I'm excited for it, and like I said, we will have a review coming out sometime on Monday, which is Labor Day, uh, and then this upcoming week, just we won't have much content coming out, so apologies in advance, but again, I'm going to be on vacation, um, so it is what it is, but we will be back to our regularly scheduled programming in two weeks, uh, so we appreciate everybody uh, who is continuing to support the podcast, you guys are awesome. Thank you to any of our new subscribers, any of our new fans, um, and if you have made it through and still aren't subscribed to the podcast, either on a streaming service or on YouTube, please consider doing so. It helps us out immensely. 
You can also follow us over on Twitter at Deep Six Wrestling, where we post anytime a new episode drops. So, uh, from me and the rest of the Deep Six Wrestling crew, thank you for listening to another episode of our show, and we will talk to you in the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>